When I heard that this was going to be a World of Remnant video, I thought for sure that it was going to somehow center around the Seasonal Maidens. But I'm actually kind of glad that it didn't. This actually gives my theories about the Seasonal Maidens time to root and expand without instantly being shot down. Yay for me! Everybody out there in YouTube land, Jake of the One Man Band is back again, and welcome back to another Ruby episodic review. But we're taking a look at another one of the World of Remnant videos that Volume 3 has given us. This time, we're taking a look at the Central Communication Transient System, or the CCTS for short. But before we go any further, let me just say really quickly, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, or a Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. Is there anything else people celebrate during this time? Winter solstice? Maybe? I hope you had a happy whatever day it was. And let it also be known that I'm actually glad that this is a World of Remnant video rather than a full-blown episode. Because still, my PC, I need to get that thing working. My laptop is still dying and I don't think I could handle a full episode. So this is a nice change of pace, and I think it's it's a, it's good that we get the, these little bits of information about the world, and it helps confirm some of the theories that we have put forward. So let's talk about what this one, this World of Remnant, said. So we learn that part of the course in any universe where humans exist, there have been hundreds of technological advances throughout the years that have aided humanity in their survival in a hostile world, but none of which has been more important than the invention of the CCTS. It is the most important and probably the most pinnacle, like top of the line, invention innovation that humanity has achieved on the world of Remnant. So before the CCT existed, they did have radio signals, and radio signals, they're, they're pretty good if you just want to send a basic audio uh, transmission, you know, shortwave. But if you want to communicate with the rest of the world, that's when it gets a little bit hard. Radio waves can't be transferred that far on the world of Remnant. And the concept of ground communication is kinda dead due to the hostility of the creatures of Grimm. I mean, the further a human will get out from the kingdoms, the l more likely he will be killed by the creatures of Grimm. No matter how powerful or how strong he is as a huntsman, or anything along those lines, because he will just be eventually, eventually be overwhelmed. So with radio signals just barely being able to make it to uh, outer lying colonies of the main kingdoms, and ground communication pretty much out of the picture due to the uh, creatures of Grimm, what's there left to turn towards? The humans of Remnant did think that space may hold the key, shooting satellites in the space to help form a satellite communication, like what we have in the real world. We have satellite communication. But on the world of Remnant, they have not been able to perfect space flight due to the fact that dust loses its power as it exits Remnant's atmosphere. Now I think this development is probably one of the most important of this video. We learn that dust loses its power when it e exits the atmosphere. So does that mean it cannot function outside of a, like, in a vacuum? Or it can't function without oxygen? Or is it that dust has some sort of magical connection with the world of Remnant itself, or possibly the people of Remnant, and it can only be used when it's actually on the ground, on the world of Remnant. This kinda helps out my theory of how dust may be solidified 
magic from the Seasonal Maidens. If that dust is going to be leaving the planet where the Seasonal Maidens exist, it's going to lose its power and just become stupid dust. Dust that don't even want to be used. Dust you dust off your, your stuff with your dust rag. You can't make fuel with that! So, the world of Remnant, it can have holograms, it can have robots, it can have giant awesome mech suits, it can have transforming weapons. But the one thing that it don't have is space flight. We got them beat there, guys! We got them beat there! We have gone to space! If only we could just keep going into space. Freaking fund! NASA, damn it! So, with satellite communication out of the window, what are the people of Remnant to do? Well, it is Atlas, the kingdom of Atlas, that is the most productive in scientific and technological research that invents the CCT system. Now, it doesn't specifically go into details on how it was invented or what it exactly uses, but it is similar to radio waves, but much powerful. It's able to communicate not just audio, but text, video, data, images, practically anything. It's basically Remnant's version of the internet. Only instead of using satellite communication, it seems to use a form of radio communication. And each of the four main kingdoms hosts a giant CCT broadcasting tower. We have seen this CCT tower both in volume 1, 2, and 3. It has been one of the most important locations, especially in volume 2. And since each one is located inside one of the main kingdoms, the further you get from said kingdom, the more spotty and weak your signal will become if you are connected to it via a scroll or some other device. So, there are a few smaller relaying towers out there, but since they lie outside the protective walls of the kingdom, they are prone to grim creature attack, due to the fact that creatures of grim not only attack humans, but humanity's creations as well. And now we come to probably the second most important detail about this video. We learn that if one of the main towers was to go down, then every single other tower would also go, go down. It would create a crash across the entire world that would cut off CCT communication to everywhere. It would completely go down. Now all the towers would go down so that the proper maintenance could be maintained and done on all the towers in order to reboot the system. Now if you think about it, this may be a failsafe instead of a weakness in the system. Let me explain. As we know, the four main kingdoms were at war with each other not more than a century ago. And it was through the creation of the CCT system that, tr that once again brought the kingdoms together. Although, although there was the vital uh, tournament and festival, the CCT also brought the kingdoms even closer together. So, what would happen if, say, one tower went down in, say, um, Vacuo, and none of the other towers on the other places went down? Who would, who would be to say that that tower went down on purpose? Maybe the three other kingdoms have then banded together to go to war with Vacuo and take it over. And so they first, they cut off communications to it and now are gearing up for war. You see, that's why I believe that if one tower goes down, all towers will, will go down. It's a failsafe to make sure that not one person will have this power while somebody else doesn't. As Ozpin said, we, the people of Remnant will either all speak with one, with their own voice, or none will speak at all. It's very much a form of making everyone equal in the world. There isn't one um, kingdom that holds the entire power to the CCT system. And that's why I think that it going, if one goes down, we all go down, is actually a good idea theoretically. Now, of course, we do know 
that cinder has infected the Veil vale CCT system with the Black Queen virus, and we sh we still do not know what its main purpose is. We just know that whatever is infected with the Black Queen virus, Cinder then can have control over via her scroll. We have seen that Cinder has taken control of the tournament's random selection system. She's able to pick and choose which team battles which, it isn't up to random intervals. We've also seen that she has infected Ironwood Scroll when he connected to the CCT, and therefore she was able to access files that were on his scroll alone. So essentially, if every CCT tower is connected to the other, theoretically she can take control of every single CCT system from this one tower. As long as her Black Queen virus can travel through the radio waves or whatever kind of waves are used with the CCT, as long as it can travel through those systems, she can take control of every single one. Now, that could mean that she can control the flow of information. She can control the people, what they see, what they don't see. She can control all of that or she can just simply bring it all down and make sure it stays down. Because we know if one tower goes down, so do all the others. But what if that one tower never comes back online? Then none of the other towers will. Because once again, either everyone has a voice or nobody does. Essentially, with Cinder's virus now in the CCT, she almost has infinite power over the world's communication systems, and almost the world. The more I learn about Cinder's plan, the more it goes back to that quote that she stated back in Volume 2. It's not about overpowering the enemy. It's about taking away what power they have. Whatever power people have, she is taking it away. She took away part of Amber's maiden power. She is now taking power away from the people of Remnant by controlling the CCT. She's taken power away from Ironwood. She's taking his secrets. She's taking the power away from the vital tournament by choosing who fights who. The only question now is, what kind of power is she going to take next? And who will be the casualty from this next acquisition of power. Hey, hey, hey everyone, uh, that's pretty much all I have about this video. It was a real short World of Remnant video and this was a real short review, but hey, I want to know what you guys think about it. Do you think I'm kind of, I got something going with the, the, the Cinder's power trip theory or do you have a theory of your own? Be sure to leave any crackpot theories, th uh, comments, or questions down below in the comments because I love to read them. And hey, if you're not already, why don't you check out my uh, Facebook group, Team Theory. If you ever want to post a, a crackpot theory about Ruby, an anime, a movie, a video game, anything along those lines, you can do it there and you can have other people comment and um, yeah, contribute to your theory so be sure to check that out and if you want to you can also check out my patreon page see what's going on there also big thanks to all my patreon sponsors especially grant allen hill uh i love all you guys you guys are all awesome and i just want to thank you for helping support me in what I'm doing here on YouTube. And before you go, be sure to check out some other videos that I've done. I do a lot of Ruby theories, it's pretty much my thing. And be sure to like and favor if you've enjoyed, subscribe, of course, if you feel inclined to. And I'll see you next time I'm out there in YouTube land. Be a good person, tip your wages, keep moving forward. I'll see you then. Yeah, yeah.